Mr. Speaker, I rise to endorse the resolution to authorize the Minister of Finance to guarantee an amount of $80 million loan for, from the First National Bank to the National Lotteries Authority to assist with the finance of youth and sports infrastructure and the programs. Mr. Speaker, sometimes in life, you have to sacrifice even your health and the advice of doctors in the interest of bringing the truth to light, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Speaker, I have a certificate of five days leave. And I came in here medically. <laughs> and I braved every cell in me to ensure that I lent my voice to this very, very significant investment in our youth and sports development in this country. Mr. Speaker, I've heard many say that $80 million is a lot, is a lot. But on the heels of the year we had in sports and youth development in 2023, I asked the question, if not now, when, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, our young people have shown that when they are given financial support and they are given facilities and they are encouraged and that the physical and human support are there, they can thrive and become more productive human beings, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I have no better example of this than what we just saw in the community of Sufre last weekend, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we had over 8,000 people in and around the Sufre Mini Stadium for our first ever Island Champs on the weekend, Mr. Speaker. An investment in ensuring there is exposure to our best track and field athletes, not just to their peers, not just to their parents and corporate St. Lucia, but indeed to the world when it can be consumed, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we knew during the week that we have divided attentions of these individuals. The corporate world is at work, parents are at work, coaches are at work. And so, Mr. Speaker, we had to gravitate to the saying, madness and insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we had to transform things, shake it up, so we can will and come again, as the young people would say, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, you would see the investment of over $100,000 from First National Bank in this competition, Mr. Speaker. Very well spent. But, Mr. Speaker, when we talk about youth and sports development in this nation, we must ask ourselves, when does it truly occur, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, because I believe that if you take an objective look at the history of St. Lucia, anything of substance that happens in youth and sports development happens under the governance of the St. Lucia Labour Party, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it was the St. Lucia Labour Party who built the George Odlum Stadium in Viewfort, Mr. Speaker. It was the St. Lucia Labour Party who built the Darren Sammy Stadium in Grosley, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is the St. Lucia Labour Party that is currently building the National Aquatic Center for our swimmers in this nation, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, a center that has been spoken about since 1987, finally, in the next 12 to 14 months, it will be available for regional and international competition right here in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it was this government that took the bold step of removing VAT on sports equipment for our young people, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I don't think people have understood what this means because they've not gotten the, the context. When a young man asks a minister for a ball, a proper football, 
a proper football costs over $250 in this country, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, they were there for five years. They went into a sixth year. They campaigned on removing VAT, reducing and totally removing VAT, Mr. Speaker, from this nation. And they never considered, despite reducing it to 12.5, they never considered a complete removal on sports equipment. It took the government of the St. Lucia Labour Party to get this done. And now, Mr. Speaker, somebody will be able to get a ball for about $190, 100, $100, $200, Mr. Speaker. This would mean that a parliamentary rep that would have just bought two can now buy 10. And I'm encouraging them to buy more. <laughs> because, Mr. Speaker, this investment in young people's life is very, very important and significant, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it was this St. Lucia Labour Party government in the times past under the member for Denry North provided the first financial support to Julian Alfred, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, when they came into government, there was a lull, Mr. Speaker. A lull on an athlete that showed every single individual that she would be world class, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, in the interest of politics, this athlete had to suffer the indignity of this finances being removed, Mr. Speaker. And I can guarantee you, she will never forget. Mr. Speaker, it was this government who re-established the financial support for Julian Alfred under this Prime Minister and member for Castries East. $250,000 in our bad budget for a transformation from a collegiate athlete to a professional, Mr. Speaker. And guess what we just saw? In a first professional endeavor in a 60-meter sprint, a world title brought to St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is the government of the St. Lucia Labour Party that has established the first 100% solar-powered facility in the entire Caribbean region, Mr. Speaker. 100% off the grid. And the next month, mid-April, we'll be having the ribbon cutting and lighting ceremony in Corinth, 100% solar-powered, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, and the I was privileged. <laughs> let, let, me, let me get to that. Let me get to that. Because I need to explain that to our, our colleagues. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, when the member for Castry South stands in this honorable house and says that the member from Miku does not understand sports development, it is really a fact like no other, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as a young person in sports. When we came into government, the cost of lighting in Grosley exceeded $180,000, Mr. Speaker, in terms of the bill, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, they had every opportunity to gravitate towards more sustainable sports, Mr. Speaker, yet they gravitated towards four, four facilities that were against the tide of where the globe is going, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as a new ministry, we had to turn that on its head. And so we've decided that the transition will take time, but we are transitioning every facility we can from these lights to LED and then solar lights, Mr. Speaker. That is the vision that we have. So the cost of using those facilities will significantly be reduced, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is this government of the St. Lucia Labour Party that established the first ever alternative sports season for our people that are not involved in only cricket and football and track and field, but these individuals that are into car racing, these individuals that are into chess, Mr. Speaker, these individuals that are into BMX, Mr. Speaker, and Moto X, Mr. Speaker, and that's Mr. Speaker. It is this government that has given them the requisite attention so that they can invest in the talents and capabilities, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is this government 
that has established for the first time in our history a semi-professional football league, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, when we talk about sports development and investing $80 million, Mr. Speaker, I know the, the PM likes to say that the Minister for Sports wants him to spend his entire budget on sport. But, Mr. Speaker, we all know the transformative power of sports in our communities, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, with a semi-pro league, Mr. Speaker, we have invested directly in young people and we've said to them that the talent and the skill you have in football, we are going to ensure that it's nurtured, that we're going to leverage this football and make better individuals, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, it's not just going to be football on the field. They are going to be in programs, Mr. Speaker. And the Minister of Education and myself, in collaboration with the NSDC and the Taiwanese government, we've signed an agreement of over $200,000 to ensure that we have skills, programs, and training for our athletes in this great nation, Mr. Speaker. This is how we leverage sports to transform lives, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, these young men and women will be able to access skills and programs such as bartending, massage therapy from the NSDC through this program to ensure that beyond their years of football, that they have a skill to fall back on, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the issue of crime and violence continue to percolate for our communities. And we continue to see it dwindling fathers, Mr. Speaker. And it is through the semi-pro league that we are going to establish parenting workshop for our young men plant parenthood for our young men, fathering workshops for our young men, Mr. Speaker. And it is through football we are going to transform those lives, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is this government that after years and years and years of trying, have finally, Mr. Speaker, ensured that we have an inter-secondary school competition on the weekend, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when we talk about island champs, Mr. Speaker, it is more than just ensuring that there is visibility for our athletes. Track and field, as the member for Castro South alluded to, is probably one of the sporting activities that brings up the vibration in a community, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stood and watched Viewfort Compre, Mr. Speaker, run a four by 400 meter relay. And Mr. Speaker, when this individual caught that bateau, Mr. Speaker, I looked around and there was nobody seated, Mr. Speaker. The entire place felt like it was shaking, Mr. Speaker. The vibe in that community, you could have felt it, Mr. Speaker, as they cheered on these individuals, Mr. Speaker. I am of the firm belief that when you develop that sort of sporting culture in track and field, it permeates to every other sporting discipline in this country, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, this is why this government took the bold step, Mr. Speaker, despite all the naysayers, despite the obstructionists, that we need to invest in track and field in this way, Mr. Speaker, because we need to find our next Julian Alfred, Mr. Speaker, in this country, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I'm very encouraged that this government and this Prime Minister continues to invest in our youth and our sporting infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, the member from Miku South postulated that NLA was in a position where they could not have obtained this loan, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, he had the temerity, the audacity, the unmitigating goal to stand in this house and indicate to us that when he left, NLA brought in in excess of $600,000 and they were better able and they are in financial constraints, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, every single challenge we faced in sports development in St. Lucia in terms of our facility upgrades, 
in terms of ensuring the Leclerc playing field is upgraded, the Souffre playing field, the, the Otabo court, and the, the, all the, the Grace playing field, the Bellevue playing field, the Auger playing field, the Larissus playing field. That's, that's washing off. The, the Cicero field, the Masha and Mindofilic. Every constraint has, be, has been because of the actions taken by the government of the past under the member for Miss Kutsa, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, earlier the member for Castro South indicated that an agreement was signed on the eve of elections that really was a noose around the neck of this government as it pertains to youth and sports development over the last two and a half years. Mr. Speaker, I have with me the amendment to the professional services contract between the National Lotteries Authority and Cage St. Lucia to design, develop, and implement and operate connected video lotteries and virtual sports betting. Mr. Speaker, let me just explain to St. Lucia how you finance youth and sports development in this country. Boy. Mr. Speaker, the National Lotteries originally was established under Honorable Mario Michel to ensure that funds, a percentage from the funds from gambling in this country goes to youth and sports development, Mr. Speaker. And so the first agreement signed was with CBN out of Canada. Mr. Speaker, Canadian banknotes. Mr. Speaker, later on, an agreement was signed with Cage, and as the Honorable Prime Minister says, as a businessman, you try to look for the best deal, and they went and they got the best deal that they could have gotten. But Mr. Speaker, in this document, we see why lotteries have had so many difficulties in ensuring that they maximize the amount of money that can be used to even do what we are doing here today, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the first amendment to this professional service contract is made of July 2021, Mr. Okay. Speaker. July. July. While you were campaigning and you were campaigning and you were campaigning and you were campaigning, <laughs> we are doing already. <laughs> In July 2021, by and between the National Lotteries Authority and Cade St. Lucia, a company registered under the Company Act. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the terms of this contract with respect to connected video lottery games will be extended from the date of the contract is completed its execution by the parties for an additional 10 years, Mr. Speaker. They signed a contract in July 2021 on the heels of the election, heels of an election, and extended this for 10 years, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's a long document. I'll make it a document to the House so we can all peruse, Mr. Speaker. Under Article 3, service fee and payment. Mr. Speaker, the NLA received with respect to connected video lottery games deployed at a specific and agreed location in the premises denoted as the Baywalk Mall, a service fee of 8% of net win calculated on a monthly basis which will be paid in arrears of the 25th of the following month. The same fee shall apply during the additional 10 years of extension of the term, but respect with respect to connected video lottery games deployed at any other location, Mr. Speaker. Other than the Baywalk Mall location, 17% of net win, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in this contract, it was agreed upon that the amount that would come out of all the proceeds would be 17%. Mr. Speaker, the previous amount before that contract was 20%, Mr. Speaker. 
a 3% deduction in the amount, Mr. Speaker. And here is the problem, Mr. Speaker. Here is the problem. Section 4.15, filing of tax returns, Mr. Speaker. The government shall grant to CAGE and LLA shall secure an exemption from CAGE from the original 10-year term, the additional term, and any extension thereunto. All taxes, duties, fees, charges, impositions, or revenue enhancements of any kind levied or imposed directly or indirectly in connection with the management and operation of its connected video lottery games. Mr. Speaker, the government shall grant to CAGE and NLA shall secure an exemption from CAGE for that 10 year period, an extension there to all taxes, duties, fees, charges, impositions, and revenue enhancement of any kind. Any revenue enhancement of any kind. So as a consequence of this, Mr. Speaker, we had a situation where CAGE was not mandated to pay any of these taxes. Any of them, Mr. Speaker. And so we had a situation for months on end where licensing fees that should have been passed on to the national lotteries for the use of youth and sports development in the country was significantly lowered as the taxes were being withheld, Mr. Speaker. I want to make sure I say this properly. I want to make sure I try it carefully, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, during my time as Minister of Youth Development and Sports, there have been major upgrades in our tourism structure, in the activities happening up north, Mr. Speaker. And so, Anybody who would have been doing video games would have upgraded their facilities. And naturally, as a business, they upgraded. The cost of the upgrades from this document indicated that government, despite the fact that they never came in here to do this, would have to withhold the taxes, or government would exempt them from paying those taxes, Mr. Speaker. And so we had a situation where we had amounts of $600,000 coming in to lotteries, and then we've seen a further deduction, Mr. Speaker, bringing it down to $400,000, Mr. Speaker. And there were times, Mr. Speaker, where the licensing fees that actually were paid by the NLA got down to lower than $100,000, Mr. Speaker. And so for months on end, when I went to cabinet, I had to look at the member for library and say, Uji come in, Uji come in. The lights come in, Uji. For months on end, I had to say to the member for Denry North that he's um, playing field, the Grand Ravine playing field. Miss, I hear about Grand Ravine for, I, I dream about Grand Ravine. I had to hear from the member for Castries, <laughs> Castries North. You know, it's the Clary playing field. But Mr. Speaker, there really was not fiscal space to do all what we needed to do because of those activities, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, luckily, under this Minister of Finance, we are better able to maneuver for negotiation, and we are better able to do what we need to do to develop our youth and sports, and we are here better than ever, Mr. Speaker. Better than ever, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as we continue to develop our facilities, Mr. Speaker, I need to remind everybody that it's not just youth that will benefit, not just sports that will benefit from this, but also the youth, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, at the recently concluded OACS Youth and Sports Ministers Conference, Mr. Speaker, we spoke about the crime situation in our countries. And as youth ministers, we knew where the genesis of it came from. We've heard so much discussion about six and seven in our schools, so much discussions about gangs, pretty much going through all the countries, 
And we've decided as a region to really grab hold of the situation. The numbers six and seven has been demonized, Mr. Speaker. It's been glorified, sorry, in the sense that young people feel proud to say what number they represent based on what happened in Trinidad, what originated from Trinidad, Mr. Speaker. And so we've decided, Mr. Speaker, that we are going to launch a program throughout the OACS, Mr. Speaker. We had a discussion on using a number that would provide positivity amongst our young people throughout the region. And Mr. Speaker, we are going to launch Project One, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Mr. Speaker, with Project One, we're going to encourage our young people to not see themselves as six or seven or identify with being a six or a seven or a gang, but look at themselves and see themselves as one in a million, Mr. Speaker. Look at himself and say, I am one in a million. I control my destiny. I do not succumb to peer pressure. I can do the right thing. I have a contribution as one person to make towards the development of this country, Mr. Speaker. And so we are going to get the biggest social media influencers, the biggest sports athletes, Julian Alfred, Darren Sammy, Johnson Charles, uh, Gary Maffrey was a former West Indies player, the biggest soccer stars, Ricky T, uh, Ezra the Fun Machine, who is the best, by the way, um, Imran Nerdy, and the likes, Venus Cherry, Rise, to really come on board with insignia for the schools and encourage the next generation to see themselves as one. Because this government is ensuring that we invest in every single one, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I close by saying, Mr. Speaker, we really have a lot of work to do, and this will certainly ensure that we continue the work that we are doing in youth and sports development, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we just had the best year ever in sports in terms of achievements in St. Lucia. We are the champions of the Caribbean Boxing Tournament, Mr. Speaker. We are the champions of OECS Volleyball, champions of table tennis, Caribbean table tennis, champions at Carifta Games in track, and champions at Carifta Games in swimming, Mr. Speaker. We are champions in Windward Islands cricket, youth and senior, Mr. Speaker. And now, Mr. Speaker, we are champions in the world in 60 meters, Mr. Speaker. And so with this loan, Mr. Speaker, we may not be able to do all 140 courts in this country, and all 90 <laughs> playing fields, which amounts to 230 facilities. We may not be able to do all of them, Mr. Speaker. But we will certainly try. And so I endorse this motion to borrow this amount. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.